the end of the chapter, I have put a several practice questions for you guys. And these questions are very similar to the questions in your exam. So let's just take a look. First, consider the loan which of the following would increase the company's current ratio. In order to answer this question, you need to first check the formula sheet what current ratio is. And it is a current assets divided by current liabilities. So if we look at option A, if net fixed assets increase, does that have any effect on my current assets? The answer is no, because fixed assets is about long term and current assets is about short term. If we look at option B, then you see the uh, accrued liabilities increase, increase, then it is a part of a current liabilities, and uh, the current liability is the denominator of a current ratio. When you have a larger denominator due to the increase in accruals, then your current ratio would be reduced. C is not correct because uh, for the same reason, when those payable increase, the current liabilities would uh, increase and that's going to decrease my current ratio. D would be correct because uh, current uh, accounts receivable is part of uh, current assets. And when this part increase, the numerator of current ratio would go up just like the uh, current assets goes up, then I would have a higher current ratio. And E is excluded for the same reason of a B and a C. So this question is uh, pretty easy. The next one is actually easier to ask you which of the following uh, change would uh, indicate an improvement of company's financial position. The first one is the tie ratio declines. Tie ratio is uh, operating income divided by interest payment. So when this one goes down, it's not that good because you have a less income but more interest to pay. The second one is not good. The day sales outstanding ratio basically is the number of days to um, uh, it takes to uh, collect our accounts receivable. If this ratio increases, that means it's, it's taking longer um, to collect my receivable. So that's not good. We want to take shorter time to, uh, to cash out our receivable. C is correct. Quick ratio indicates liquidity. When quick ratio increases, that means we have more cash or uh, liquid assets on hold um, in, in control, so, uh, we, so we are more able to meet our short-term obligations. D is incorrect uh, because it's the opposite. Uh, when the current ratio declines, we are less able to meet our short-term obligations. E is incorrect because when total assets term ratio decreases, we would have uh, less efficiency. The last one here is actually pretty challenging because you need to consider the cash effect of a lot of these activities. So this is what is given. The company has a current assets of $5 million and a current liabilities of $10 million. So consider along which of the following actions would increase the company's current ratio, right? So you need to first to check the uh, structure of current ratio and uh, it is, uh, let me use a, a blank spreadsheet to work on this. And current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay, so option A, borrow using the short notes payable at $1 million and then use the cash you just raised to buy inventories. So what happened here is, uh, what happened here is uh, uh, you uh, borrow the money and spend the money for inventory. So just to say, if notes payable is issued, then what would happen to your current assets? So you just have a, a one million cash in your pocket. So your cash would increase by one million. And then you also have a, a current liabilities got affected. So your notes payable would increase by one million as well. You know, at the start, current assets was five million and uh, current liabilities was uh, 10 million. All right, and that's not the end of the story. Then you gotta use the cash to buy inventories. So what would happen is uh, your cash would decrease by one million. Let me uh, drop 
down here by 1 million and then your inventory would increase by 1 million so the overall effect here is uh, cash goes up and then it goes down cash being borrowed and then spent so the net effect on cash is zero but you have uh, inventory increased you also have a notes increased so the new level of current assets is a 5 plus 1 that's a 6 million and the new level of current liabilities is a 10 plus 1 that's a 11 and a 6 over 11 is a greater than 5 over 10 okay 6 over 11 is a greater than 5 over 10 so the current ratio after these two activities is greater than the current ratio before and uh, option A is the correct one all right if this is an exam you can just skip the rest of the options and just move along to another one another question uh, but for practice purpose I want you guys to uh, take a look at other options option B use one million dollar cash to reduce accruals so if that happens then you would uh, have a less cash in your pocket then your cash would go down by one million and then your accruals get paid off so you have a less debt outstanding and uh, actually it's liability okay uh, because debt has interest is the uh, Accrual is part of liability, not debt. So when your accruals get paid off, your accrual decreases by one million, and that would affect your current liabilities. Then what would be your new current assets? It would be a four million. It's a five minus one, and your current liabilities would be nine million. That's a ten minus one, and a four over nine is less than five over ten. So you have a reduced current ratio when you use your cash to pay the accruals. Okay, and for uh, option C, it's uh, excluded for the same reason. The only difference here is uh, you use the cash to pay off your payables. So your payable decreases by one million, and you still have the same level of of a current assets afterward and the same level of a current liabilities afterward and you have the same current ratio afterward which is less than the uh, current ratio before so the current ratio before was 5 over 10 which is 0. 0.5 and now the new one is uh, 4 over 9 which is uh, less than before okay option D should also be excluded for the same reason. Well, this time it's changed to a uh, notes payable. Okay, so uh, the the everything else, all the number change would be the same as a B and a C. And the last one, you use a one million dollar cash to reduce the long term bonds outstanding. So this time again, you're gonna spend one million dollar cash. Your cash got reduced. Your current assets reduced to two four million. And then this time it is the uh, long term bond got reduced by 1 million. Does that really affect your current liabilities? The answer is no. Your current liabilities is still $10 million because long term bond does not belong to current liabilities. Current liabilities are only for short terms. Still, your new current ratio is lower than before. After this uh, practice questions, you can move to your assignment one and uh, take a look at uh, these uh, uh, additional questions in question two. So in question two, we have uh, taken care of the financial ratio calculations for the chapter three Excel file. And here are some additional questions asked out of you. Um, question A, if inventories of a 2016 increase by $500, what is the new quick ratio? Assume everything else is the same. If you check the uh, chapter two, this time I, I wanna show my point. I'm going to use the uh, chapter two, the result for chapter two as uh, my uh, example here. It's the same number, uh, it's all from the textbook. All right, 
So based on the numbers here, what is the quick ratio? You know the quick ratio is uh, just a current assets minus inventories divided by current liabilities. All right, so I'm going to use abbreviation. Okay, so this is a formula for quick ratio. I first need to know what the quick ratio is. Right now, it is uh, a current assets minus my inventories. Okay, don't forget to put a set of parentheses. Then the whole thing is uh, divided by the current liabilities. Okay, so that's the starting current ratio. Change the format to general. Okay. So if I increased my inventories by 500, then the new inventory in 2016, instead of a 1,000, would be 1,500. As you can see, this is my new quick ratio. Let me just undo the change. I want you guys to pay close attention to cash here and uh, current assets here, and also current liabilities right here. So what happens there is uh, if I change my inventory from 1,000 to uh, 1,500, what you shall see is uh, my cash got reduced, okay? My cash got reduced because I spend $500 more cash on it, so I have less cash. And my inventory increases by the same amount. However, my total current assets is still the same. And if I use uh, the current assets subtracted by a higher level of an inventory, which is a $500 more inventory, then I would have a, a lower numerator here. My current liabilities is still the same. So that's how my quick ratio changes. Again, when you do questions like this, you should consider the cash effect of the activities. That's very important, the cash effect of the activities. For example, in this one, when inventories increase, my cash got reduced. So what would happen to my current assets? What would happen to my inventories? And what would happen to my current liabilities? All need to be considered. Okay, the next one is, uh, if $600 of a long-term bond is paid off in 2016, what is the new total debt ratio? All right, so if I check the formulas, the debt ratio equals to the total debt, which is my notes payable plus the long-term bond. and it will be divided by the total assets. So I have no problem finding these uh, formulas. Well, the thing is I need to calculate my debt ratio. When I do such a calculation, adding notes payable to long-term uh, bond, and then divide the thing by total assets. So this is my original debt ratio 42%, okay? And this time, my story here is uh, $600 of uh, long-term bond is paid off. It's gone, it's reduced. But the thing is, I need to consider the cash effect of the activity. So if a $600 bond is paid off, then as you can see, I have a uh, only $600 left, 1,200 minus 600, so my residual is a 600. So what you see here is uh, my cash changes, so is my total assets, okay? And on the liability side, my total liabilities and equity also got reduced, okay? So when this uh, long-term bonds get uh, changed, not only my total liabilities and equity got a change, but also my cash would uh, change accordingly because I spend that cash to pay off the debt. 
and then my total assets, which is part of the uh, formula, also get changed. So that's how I end up with a lower debt ratio. And these kind of questions would be the hardest in your midterm exam, because not only you need to do the calculations, finding the right numbers from the financial statements, plug them into the right formula, but also you need to consider the cash effect of all these activities. Just to keep in mind that this cash equivalence will always change according to the financial activities. The next thing I want to talk about is your return report one, which is a case study on a company called Planet Popcorn. And we're going to use the knowledge we learned in the previous chapters about the financial statements and the financial ratios to answer the questions in this uh, report in the Word file. So basically, you're gonna download this uh, Word file. I have already opened it up here for you. And you can see all the questions here to answer. And also, you're gonna watch a 40 minutes video and uh, get all the information from this video. Okay, so this is our guy. His name is uh, Marcus Lemonis, and he is an entrepreneur located in Chicago. Yes, he is in our city. And uh, he has a major business called Camping World. This Camping World has uh, many locations across the United States, and it is also a publicly traded company. The company is listed at the New York Stock Exchange with a stock price of uh, approximately $36 this week. So it is a famous firm. And he not only does the camping businesses, but also he sniff around the country, see all the small businesses that are worth investing. And many of the small businesses in his search are in financial distress. The businesses need more money, need more, um, need a better business model. And he just uh, go there and uh, meet those uh, business owners to see if there are potentials to invest. And in this case, he goes to Disney in California to see a popcorn business and uh, just to check all the financials of the company, learn about the business and uh, get to know the people there. And uh, in the report, it first asks you what is the uh, shape of the business, basically uh, some uh, general questions like what are the main products of the business? Not only the business does popcorn, but also uh, crepes and uh, funnel cakes. And then you also need to uh, extract the information of the business, uh, such as uh, the total revenue, the uh, profit. And here, what is the operating problem of the business? So the operating problem is the problem or the problems that prevent your business from getting high operating income. So what is the operating income? It is a sales minus costs minus depreciation and all this. So you gotta answer, does the company have a high enough sales? That's number one. And second, does the company have a too much cost? The next question is about financial problems. So financial problem is uh, related to the company's debt and also the interest payment and also the company's cash, whether it's sufficient or not. This would fall into the category of uh, financial problems. And in the business, the owner also have uh, a business relationship with her mother. The owner is uh, called Sherla. Yeah, this, this is our lady, Sherla. She is uh, currently the owner of uh, Planet Popcorn. And she also borrowed money from her mother to run the business. At the same time, her mother is also under her control as an employee of the company. Well, in our study of finances, when a company makes the uh, operating profit, the first party they should pay money to is their debt holders, right? And then the residual money would go to the owners. However, that's not the case. So I want you guys to explore more and answer in details what's the business relationship between the owner and her mother slash debt holder of the company. All right, and also you need to tell me what retained earnings is. So is the company having the regular retained earnings? Well, the thing is that when the company makes a lot of money, they have uh, no cash left. Well, the cash 
on the bank should be the return earnings. You know, return earnings is uh, from years and years of a savings of a profits, but there's uh, no cash left in their bank account. So where does the money go? That's another question you need to answer. Just to watch the video and answer these questions. Okay, and there are some other questions. What would be the uh, negotiation between the capitalist? It's called a venture capitalist. You probably have heard this term many times or VCs, which is our guy, Marcus Lemonis. And uh, what was the offer in the first place? Was the offer revised? You need to uh, answer this. Okay, and here are some other questions like when Marcus uh, uh, invested a certain amount of uh, money. What is the uh, capital used for? And several other questions. So the result didn't end up well because uh, according to Marcus, the business owner lacked some uh, integrity. So the deal went sour at the end. And also I want you guys to write one or two paragraphs to briefly discuss the overall lesson you learned from this case. The stuff we learned from chapter two and chapter three definitely help you better understand what's going on in this uh, uh, video uh, from the financial standpoint. And this is a reality show. It's not a movie. It's not a stage. It is uh, real. Although, you know, when the CNBC shoot the video, they want to <laughs> extract much drama as much as possible. But uh, in general, everything is uh, real. And I hope uh, this would be a good practice for you guys.